Welcome back to another episode of the Azure Enablement Show. Today, we're going to talk about the sustainability guidance in the cloud adoption framework with Tobias. So stay tuned. Welcome back. My name is Thomas, and I'm here with Tobias to talk about the sustainability guidance recently released in the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework. In this episode, we will talk about why Microsoft released the guidance and how the Cloud Adoption Framework guidance differs from the Azure Well Architected guidance. We will also share some details on what's included in this guidance for each of the Cloud Adoption Framework methodologies and provide some next steps how you can get started. If you have any questions about um, what we have discussed today in this video, please leave a comment below and we will get back to you. And be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. So Tobias, uh, great to have you here. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Microsoft recently launched the guidance around the sustainability uh, uh, in the cloud adoption framework. What was the driving factor to create this guidance? Um, so first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's awesome to be on the show. Uh, and that's a great question. So cloud impact was measured traditionally with financial metrics. So if you move to the cloud, if you migrate to the cloud, cost was the driving factor, right? Today, we see customers, they want to know more about sustainability and they're really more carbon aware. So how do I reduce my carbon emission? How do I make an impact on the climate, not just the wallet? Um, so how does that kind of intersect with cost management, cost optimization, and general cloud economics discussions? That's something we talk about now. So for uh, people in roles like the CFO uh, or chief sustainability officers, as an example, they use sustainability as a goal today, uh, something we didn't use to see back in the day. So that means you also need to measure engagement. How do you do that? And how do you know if you're on track? And how do you define the teams and responsibilities to help track these things? So in WAF, um, the well-architected framework, the guidance that we published there, it's about sustainability workload guidance, so specifically for workloads. And uh, we're now adding on to that with the guidance in CAF. And it's really with two broad themes. And one is usually how it starts by talking about cloud economics with customers. And they come and say, how do I drive cost awareness and cost optimization, for example, in my organization? And as an outcome of that might also be that if you drive cost optimization, you can also drive sustainability. And the other kind of angle is compliance. So if your organization is uh, driving some kind of regulatory compliance management, or you need to abide by specific laws or regulations, or if you're getting mandates from investors, whatever it might be, uh, organizations now have different compliance requirements on them. And sometimes you have green requirements saying that you should use renewable energy, as an example. Um, often these discussions happen in hindsight, so uh, or new requirements are like added later in the project. So with the CAF sustainability guidance, we really created to cater for that as well. So all the way from building the strategy to operating when you're then later in the cloud, um, this has been rooted in the field with partnerships um, for sustainability subject matter experts that we work with at Microsoft, including some members of the Green Software Foundation as well to help really drive awareness with this. Well, this sounds this sounds great, absolutely. So. Interestingly, you also mentioned that we already have published some guidance in the well-architected framework around sustainability. So we are now talking about the cloud adoption uh, framework guidance. So how is that different from what we already have published uh, in the well-architected framework? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I'd, I'd love to sit and talk about that for a long time. Um, so in the well-architected framework, just to kind of paint the picture, we have architects, developers, workload owners, they need to design a more optimized system so they can really impact sustainability on the workload level. So after you've deployed things to Azure or when you're deploying things to Azure, you can design them the right way, with the right size, with the right SKUs, uh, all these things to really have an impact on the carbon emissions. And in CAF, now in the cloud adoption framework, what we wanted to do is to bring relevant guidance to the executives, IT decision makers, platform managers, IT operations team, and anyone who's really managing the cloud estate. Uh, so it's a different altitude for a different audience. Um, and we talked about um, a shared responsibility here. So from decision makers to implementers between cloud providers and the customer, 
Uh, we often talk about the shared responsibility, just like with security, right? If you work a lot with security, you know, it's a shared responsibility between all parties. And the same is true with sustainability. So for sustainability, Microsoft is responsible for the data centers and the relevant considerations of those. And uh, the customer is responsible for what they deploy into those data centers. So um, a simple example of that is if you deploy an app service and you utilize only on average 5% of the entire CPU capacity, that means you can probably do right sizing as we call it because it's over allocated. So it's underutilized. So if you minimize that or you draw down the SKU and, and the tier you're deployed on, you're gonna save on carbon emissions as well. Uh, so therefore kind of a decision makers, they can impact how organizations adopt and adapt green software practices as well as push uh, the organizational kind of thinking forward for sustainability. And that kind of spreads both CAF and WAF guidance. This is fantastic and very, very interesting, obviously. And so we have obviously different guidance depending on what the, who the audience is, right? So um, now talk about the cloud adoption framework. So in this new guidance uh, in the cloud adoption framework, what is included in that one? So on a high level. So uh, on a high level, uh, it's really two things. Um, we have sprinkled sustainability all across cloud adoption framework. So wherever you are, wherever in your kind of cloud journey you are, you will be exposed to the line of thinking of sustainability. So whatever decisions you make, sustainability will be right there, uh, making you aware that when you make these decisions, also think about the climate and, uh, climate and the future impact that will have. Uh, so that's one side that we kind of spread it out. The other is that we also created net new guidance, so a specific set of pages for some of the methodologies we have, where we talk about specific recommendations across four of those existing methodologies. So the first one that we use is strategy. We talk about the early stages in your strategies, building your green teams, um, you know, setting up the goals for those teams and, and things like that. And then in the plan methodology, we talk about identifying your current emissions, designing roles and responsibilities, um, nominating sustainability leads, to help drive these things in your organization before you then really kick things off. And then if you've migrated to the cloud or you're up and running in the cloud, you also need to govern things. So in the govern methodology, we talk about governance at large, but maybe with a sustainability lens. Uh, so slightly different than just normal governance. So Azure policies, as an example, can help drive sustainability outcomes as well by restricting what and where you can deploy things. If, for example, you live in, in a part of the world that has a lot of renewable energy, you can also restrict where you can deploy resources to always say, we only want to use renewable energy when we deploy these type of resources. Um, and then you have the manage methodology. And again, when you're up and running already in the cloud, uh, this talks about kind of what considerations you need to look at. Uh, how do you monitor carbon emissions practically, uh, you know, using cost uh, as a proxy for sustainability? Because again, if you drive cost awareness and cost optimization, Usually the outcome is you're lowering the tiers that you deploy on, ultimately leading to less kind of carbon emissions into the atmosphere as well. So those are kind of the, some of the things we're talking about in CAF. Awesome. And it's great to see that it goes through the whole CAF, basically, and the whole cloud adoption framework. Uh, and it's not just this one part thing. So uh, that's great. So where can I and where can the audience learn more about this? And how do we get started? So I think. Uh, Either you hit your favorite search engine and you search for cloud adoption framework sustainability or Azure uh, cloud adoption sustainability, or if you head over to the Microsoft cloud adoption framework on Microsoft Learn, uh, you can just type in sustainability in the search box or in the navigation search and you're gonna find everything right there. Awesome. And we also will put some of the links obviously in the description below to make it easy for you uh, as well. So Tobias, um, you told me you're not done yet. So what's next? So what's next is, uh, just like with security, right? Sustainability is a continuous effort. It never really stops. It's not like you drive a project and then you come over the finishing line and you drop everything. You have to drive this all the time. So we're adding more guidance as we learn more about how things work with our customers and with our partners. Um, the next steps would also be to read the WAF guidance that we talked about. Uh, and of course, all the links to these things are in the description below and uh, on the screen as well. So you can just go check those out. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tobias. And also, thank you, everyone watching. If you want to learn more about the cloud adoption framework, check out aka.ms.